What's up everyone, today we will be going over Unit 6, it introduces us to integrals which are vital for the rest of the course and especially in Calculus BC. Make sure to check out my previous videos and leave a subscription to know when I post more new videos. Let's start with, what is an integral? An integral is the opposite of a derivative. Let's say a velocity function is given by x squared. Its derivative, acceleration, is 2x. Its antiderivative is 1 third x to the power of 3. As you can see, we are anti-differentiating and increasing the power of the function instead. An integral is also known as the area under the curve. In this example, it gives us x equals 1, so all we need to do is count the squares from x equals negative 3 to 1. We add the rectangle and two squares to get 12. If the graph included areas under the x-axis, the area is counted as negative and we would subtract it instead of adding. To approximate areas under harder graphs, such as curves, we can use Riemann sums. Riemann sum problems almost always come with a table, but you can create your own if you are given a function instead. Left Riemanns touch the curve on the left, right Riemanns touch them on the right, and midpoint Riemanns in the middle. Trapezoidal Riemanns use the trapezoid instead, and they get an even closer approximation. Let's do an example of each type, starting with the right Riemanns. We are told to use 4 subdivisions, so 5 points is the perfect amount. Since we know that the right side y value is always used, we can draw circles like these to represent the values that we will utilize. We also know it's a rectangle, so we just need to subtract the x values for width and multiply by the y value for height. Now just add the numbers to get the estimated area under the curve. For left Riemanns, we do a similar procedure, but we make sure to target the left side y values instead. We still subtract the two x values and multiply by the y value to get our sum. Using a midpoint Riemann, we take three values of x instead and draw a mushroom-like shape. We subtract the two furthest values to get the midpoint and take the y value of the middle value. Lastly, a trapezoidal Riemann uses a square shape. To get the width, we subtract the x values. The height will be the average of the two y values, which is identical to the formula of a trapezoid's area. Once again, we add the sum of them to find the estimated area. As you can see, the different types of Riemanns have different sums. We can sketch out scenarios to tell if approximations will overestimate or underestimate the area, as depicted here. I also listed out some general rules about the accuracy of approximations. An integral represents the sum of these areas and is denoted by this symbol and is read as an integral from 1 to 2 of 2x. This is called a definite integral since we are given the bounds. We can solve and get an exact number. Indefinite integrals don't give us bounds to solve and we get our solution with a constant. This is because deriving x squared plus 5 or x squared plus 3 or plus any other number gives us 2x. Here are some rules for integral manipulation. First, an integral with the same numbers as its bounds is 0 because it covers no area. Next, the constants can be pulled out. Adding two functions inside an integral is the same as adding the integral of both functions separately. You can switch the bounds of an integral if you make it negative. Lastly, you can combine integrals with adjacent bounds. The simplest integral to solve is reversing the power rule. By taking the derivative of x to the power of n, such as x squared, we first multiply by the n, then subtract the power to make it n minus 1. To take the antiderivative, we reverse the process by adding 1 to n before dividing by n plus 1. We get 1 third x cubed. We apply the same process for negative and fraction powers, and if we are given forms like a square root, we can rewrite it for easy solving. There are also some special rules for functions such as 1 over x. Its integral is ln x. Sine and cosine and e to the power of x have similar unique integrals. Using the integral rules, we know that we can separately integrate the two terms in addition or subtraction in examples like these. The next topic is the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, which has two parts. Part 1 simply states that the derivative of an integral of f of x is just f of x, 
because they cancel out. Take note that the x is dropped into f of t to make the result f of x. We can apply this to a problem like this. We get 2 sin x minus 1, but because it is sin x instead of just x, we use a chain rule and multiply it by cosine x as well. The second part of FTC says give an integral from a to b of f of x equals capital F of b minus capital F of a, where capital F is the function of its antiderivative. Using this, we can solve definite integrals. First, we integrate it just like an indefinite integral, but add this line and the bounds to the right side, indicating we need to plug them in later. Using FTC part 2, we know if it's FB minus FA, we solve and simplify to get our answer. The last topic is U substitution. Just like the chain rule for derivatives, sometimes we have multiple functions to integrate and need to undo them. With this example, we can write it as the power of 1 half and substitute u equals 3x plus 2, since it is inside the function of square root. Most of the time, the inner function or function with higher power is always u. We differentiate u to get du equals 3dx, and find dx equals du over 3. We plug it back in, and our integral is 1 third u to the 1 half, and it becomes 1 third times 2 thirds times u to the power of 3 over 2. We substitute u back in and get our answer. Make sure to add the plus c. Another use of u sub is to cancel out parts of an integral. This time, we will look at an example with a definite integral instead. We use x cubed as u since it is the most inner part, then divide by 3x squared. It cancels out the x squared and we get 1 third times the integral of e to the power of u du. Normally, we can just use an antiderivative from 1 to 2 again, but since we use the u sub, we have to plug in the bounds to u. It becomes 2 to the power of 3 and 1 to the power of 3. Our answer is e to the power of 8 minus e all over 3. Now, that's it for unit 6. Integrals are super important, and once again, you have to make sure to understand them well to prepare for a calc BC, since they are our main area of focus. If you are confused by any of the content, leave a comment and I'll answer any questions. Thanks for watching and subscribe to be notified when I post my next video.